My name is Peter Magu. I am the Chief Executive Officer and Founder of Rider Protection Services, a registered private security company in Zimbabwe. We do run uh, private security services as well as uh, a K9 division, which is into anti poaching and drug detection. So today we are focusing more on the anti poaching side of um, the, the company. Yeah. Uh, we have got a dog training center yeah. uh, situated here in Harare. So in 2013, after we have noticed that. Uh, the, there was a high rate of uh, poaching in the country. Yeah. Uh, we have decided to build a training center here in Zimbabwe. Our main goal is to have at least about 100 dogs. Uh, basing on our past experience, uh, I've been working with the dogs for the past 20 years, working in countries such as Iraq, Afghanistan, Mali, and Somalia. Uh, armed with my uh, security background, uh, we have thought of introducing those um, experiences in countdown uh, poaching in, in Zimbabwe. So far, we have managed to build uh, one block of uh, 20 units, and currently we have got uh, 21 dogs. Then, uh, out of the 21 dogs, we only have about uh, four dogs that have been deployed that are actually operational in Zimbabwe. Uh, this is mainly because we have noted that uh, most organizations that are, are into anti poaching efforts, they are mainly concentrating on, um, on the uh, protected areas and leaving some other areas that we thought they might as well need to be looked into. And the dogs that they have been using are only trained on tracking. So our dogs have been are all trained in what we call dual purpose. They are capable of tracking human scent. They are capable of detecting ammunition, uh, bush meat, snares, and they are also capable of apprehending. So you find out that uh, this also comes as an advantage in terms of minimizing cost, because one dog is capable of doing a multitask. Uh, we also want to spread our wings a little bit in deploying some of these dogs in uh, the airport as well as at our border post. The reason being that we have noted that, yes, as much as we are putting effort uh, onto the, onto the uh, protected areas, there are some people who might as well uh, be able to get away with uh, whatever they might get uh, in those protected areas. And the main market for poached um, uh, horns or is out of the country. It's either maybe Asia, and uh, we need to put a chalk on that market. And how best can we do it? We can only be able to do it by deploying these uh, detection dogs in our ports of exit. That is also very, very critical. So that in case we manage to miss uh, in the protected area, we will be able to apprehend the suspect uh, when they will try to get out of the country. Our main objective is to make sure that we have dogs that are trained to a level where uh, they will pose a very good deterrence to the criminal. We are not after uh, or interested in apprehending uh, poachers after they have already killed the animal. That's not our goal. Our goal is to make sure that uh, poachers cannot have access to the protected area. 
there is no point for us to, uh, where there is no much joy to arrest someone after an elephant has already been killed. We, only, we are only interested in making sure that we are making it very difficult for these people to gain access to these protected areas. So we would like to make sure that we deploy as much dogs as we can onto the ground as well as making sure that our dog handlers and, and rangers are trained um, uh, to the highest level, hence the uh, establishment of the training school. And um, all our training uh, staff are UN accredited. They've worked with the Department of Defense, US Army, and uh, our training standards are one of the best into the country. We have been receiving uh, quite encouraging uh, feedback from the clients that we are working with in terms of the numbers of arrests and also the numbers of um, uh, poaching cases are actually going down, of which to us is a good indication that people, uh, these poachers, they are actually seeing that where dogs are deployed, it's not a case to go. And you have to think twice before they get into these um, protected areas. Is it heavy, Greg? Good luck, Greg. Okay. Hey, Pocha. What? what are you doing in the area? You can stop and raise up your head. No. Hey! I think so! Catch him! Get out of there! Get out of there! Get out of there! Get out We would like to make sure that we deploy as much uh, dogs as we can uh, across uh, the board and also would like to have what we call um, motorized uh, detection uh, dog unit. Uh, these are the people and, uh, and dogs that will be uh, conducting random search on vehicles and cargo in transit uh, without actually having a specific checkpoint but working hand in hand with the Zimbabwe Republic Police as well as the National Park. Um, they can conduct um, a random uh, spot check on any given time without giving these poachers uh, a notice to say we are going to have or we are going to mount a checkpoint at a certain particular time and so forth. That is the other thing that we would like to, 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 to make sure we will achieve. We also want to make sure that we spread our wings to the communities that live within the protected areas. We would like to make sure that these people, they also understand on how dogs um, operate, these anti poaching dogs. It's also very important because some of these people are also uh, a source of information uh, in terms of intelligence gathering. And on the other note again, there are also people who always interact with these uh, poachers. So once we exhibit our capabilities, we are pretty much sure that they can also send a message to these poachers that this area now is a no-go area, which will also help to, to us. And in terms of uh, game count, we would like also to see um, the numbers of uh, these animals increasing. That alone will tell us that uh, our efforts are yielding uh, results. So we are not uh, only focusing on um, arresting um, the poachers, but we would like to put more efforts on making sure that we put uh, systems and mechanisms that will deter uh, these people from um, entering uh, the protected uh, areas. That is, uh, that is also very, very important. In terms of our uh, breeds, we are working with the Belgian Malinois as well as uh, the Dutch Shepherds. Um, we, would we would like to 
continue working these two breeds basing on their capability, their stamina, uh, as well as their eagerness to, to do work. And in terms of training, uh, human capital is also very, very important. You find out that uh, what we have noted is that uh, most organizations, they are just uh, handpicking either ex-police officers or ex-army guys and then deploy them as um, range uh, as rangers of which is a little bit difficult and different because the military experience uh, or the police experience is not good enough you need to understand the bushcraft you need to understand uh, more with uh, trekking as well uh, so training is uh, very important in terms of um, uh, anti-poaching if we are to achieve uh, good results as, as a country. Once a handler has built a bond with a dog, that alone is a good motivation. It's very difficult to separate the union once it has been established. So you find that uh, a dog is different from a gun. Uh, with a dog, there is always communication. Uh, uh, the handler is always keeping alive uh, as he communicates with his dog. It's a little bit different from, from a gun. Yeah. And, and that alone, it keeps our, our handlers uh, motivated and, and, and going. So as much as um, uh, there are cases of uh, poaching decline in the country, we also need to make sure that we put a full stop to, to poaching not for the betterment of us, but for the betterment of the tourism industry and for the betterment of the future generation. Some of uh, these animals that are being poached, for example, pangolins, uh, the white and black rhino, uh, as well as the elephant and the leopards, they are almost uh, about to extinct. If something is not done, and it's done like now, um, in the next 20 years, it might be history. And we don't want we don't want our future generation to end up just seeing an elephant as a picture. These are God-given resources. It is our responsibility as a people to make sure that we put um, uh, uh, enough protection and safeguard these animals as they breed and also help economically in terms of uh, tourism. Uh, I think there are a couple of uh, beliefs associated with the uh, um, rhino horn issue. People they believe that if you if you use the rhino horn, you'll be able to treat things like cancer uh, and so forth. And also the price, the price of the rhino horn is always going up. Also, there's each to do with unemployment, particularly here in Zimbabwe. Uh, and poverty in general, you find out that some of these poachers are just poaching for the sake of uh, consumption. Uh, the, 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 these poachers, to us, they pose a threat, though some people they say it's not, but to us it's a threat because today they just poach maybe a wild dog, a bush bag for consumption. But once they get experience of getting into these uh, protected uh, areas, eventually that's when they then start looking into uh, big animals. So employment is a factor and traditional beliefs is also a factor that is also contributing to poaching. So are there innocent people who are kind of caught in the middle? Yeah, in, in, in some instances you find out that uh, uh, some of these guys that are doing uh, poaching right now, uh, they are just being manipulated. This is mainly uh, 
because of poverty and unemployment. The initial beneficiaries, they may not be actually into the bush. These are people with money. These are people that are always living large. So they use their money uh, to manipulate uh, poor young men uh, who are living within uh, poor communities to go and do all these uh, dirty things. So you find out that in some instances when you happen to arrest these guys, when you do interrogation, they will tell you that they will only maybe trying to do it for them to raise money for school kids. They only do that because they've been promised to be paid so much. So yeah, I can see to some extent, there are some innocent people that are being caught uh, within the crossfire. How can the... The, the, the company, the work you do, um, and the country create incentives, especially to the poor and desperate people who, who are struggling to keep their families fed. Um, as you already pointed out, you could get caught in it innocently uh, for survival. So as to maybe to re-educate, um, incentivize, and redirect these people who might be tempted to, to other resources, um, that could be made available so they never get involved in this kind of horrible situation? Uh, I think it would be viable if uh, these people are given enough education about how this wildlife is important to them. And secondly, I think uh, if uh, resources are channeled towards income generating it's also very it's also very very important and employment creation you find that in some instances there are situations whereby we are actually being forced to recruit our handlers from people who are within the protected areas so by creating employment you make sure that this it actually uh, stop these people from engaging in this illicit trade What is needed in terms of like specifics um, in terms of resources uh, and manpower um, to assist the organization? Uh, from our side, I think what is the critical for now is more to do with um, a financial uh, capacity. We have got people who are capable of training people, uh, but we have got a challenge in terms of uh, giving these people uh, required uniform, uh, required gear to do all the necessary patrols. We also need things like vehicles as well. It also helps. And also not forgetting that also these dogs, they are also not very cheap in terms of training. It takes about six months to train, to train these dogs, and it takes about three months to train the handler before they are deployed into, 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 into the protected area. So I think uh, things like um, uh, uniforms, things like uh, uh, vehicles are also very important. And also communication, things like uh, radio communication is also very important. Uniform also is also very important. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, I think those are some of the things that can also actually motivate even people within the uh, living within the uh, protected area to say, let's go and join these people. Once we are capacitated, we are able to recruit more people that live within the protected areas into our K9 uh, unit. And then we give them a work to do. Instead, yeah. then they will choose to work instead of getting into poaching. So that, that will also work as an advantage. Mm -hmm.